we are revisiting the idea of connected particles here. Um, and again, we're looking at static. So we know in this scenario that we've got here that things are uh, not moving. Now, the connected particles that you should have looked at in year 12 come in three will come in two different scenarios, actually, really, for year 12. You've probably looked at scenarios that look like this, right? And you probably looked at scenarios that look like this. You may also have looked at scenarios of maybe like a car driving with like a trailer behind it. But this is probably the, the normal two that you've come across most commonly. We can now add in a new type of connected particle which is something that is now going to be acting, oops, on a slope like this. So instead of it being on a flat table, it's now on an inclined table. And we're going to think about how things might behave in that particular situation that we've got. This one here, we can't adapt this for angles, OK? What you will eventually come across is we're going to do some questions that might look like this. These are quite rare, which makes me think it's probably going to be in the exam. Uh, where you have two inclined planes. But really, you just kind of split that into two questions and you just think about it as two inclined planes that have just been stuck together in the middle. So we've got all of these different scenarios here and we're going to try and uh, just recap some of the ideas from year 12 and possibly just add in the fact that we've got something that's now acting at an angle. So it says, a mass of three kilograms rests on the surface of a smooth plane. So we're not revisiting friction, we're just revisiting the idea of connected particles. And it's on a plane which is inclined at 45 degrees to the horizontal. The mass is attached to a cable which passes up the plane along the line of greatest slope. That means that it's just going directly up the plane rather than going wonky to one side. Um, and it says it then passes over a smooth pulley at the top of the plane. The cable carries a mass of one kilograms freely suspended at the other end. Okay, let's just pause there for a second. We have got a slope. It says at the top of the slope, there is a pulley and hanging off that cable, there is a particle of one kilogram. On the slope, it says there is another particle like this. In fact, I don't like how small my diagram is. So I want to make this a bit bigger because it's much easier when we can see everything largely drawn here, OK? So we start off with that triangle. We're going to have a particle here. We've got a cable. And then we've got something else that's hanging over the other side. We said that this is 45 degrees. And we'll add on some of the forces in just a second. Um, it says that we've done some modelling here. It says the masses are modelled as particles. What does it mean if they've been modelled as particles? What kind of things do, have we assumed if we're modelling them as particles? Yeah? What were you going to say, Akram? No air resistance. Good. So if they said, state how you've used uh, the modelling as particles, there's no air resistance. There's something else about particles as well. Like? Nope. Friction. No, there can be friction. What, I, did you say something? Like, I don't know, the mass is concentrated at one The mass is concentrated at one point. In other words, we can ignore their size. We can ignore the dimensions of the block. We can say that they're just like a single point. But um, probably in this case, we're more interested in the fact that it's, it's got um, no, no air resistance. And then it also says that the cable is being modelled as a light, inextensible string. What about the fact of the string being um, inextensible does that tell us? That, it all, that both particles would move as one. If, it was, if they were moving, we would say that both particles have the same acceleration. What about if uh, the light, if the string is light? What does that tell us about, about the tension? The tension is the same throughout the string. If the string is light, we say that the tension is equal throughout. The reason you can think about that is if the string was heavy, if you imagine a big heavy rope, if you have a rope that was a heavy rope, the bit at the top of the rope is also having to support all of the heavy rope. The bit at the bottom of the rope is not having to support the heavy rope. So the tension would get higher as you go up through the string. Anyway, we're kind of going a bit off topic here. Let's just go back to what the question says. There is a force of P newtons acting horizontally on the three kilogram mass, and the system is in equilibrium. Can you just show me with your arm what horizontally looks like? <laughs> Good. So I don't want to see a force like this. 
okay? I don't want to see that because that's not horizontally. I want to see something that is actually going to be acting on it in a horizontal direction in this kind of way. And we're going to figure out what that might look like in just a second. So there's some things I want to add onto the diagram. First of all, this is my three kilogram mass. So I'm going to want to say that it's got a normal reaction and I'm going to want to say that it's got a weight of 3G. This is a one kilogram mass. So I'm going to want to say that it's got a weight of G. Is that correct, that it's a one kilogram mass? Mm -hmm. Okay, and now at this stage, in order to figure out the direction that the tension is, you can either just remember it or you can do something that I much prefer to do, which is to imagine that you are a block, okay? <laughs> and this will sound really, really silly, but if you imagine being a block here and you've got a piece of string coming out the top of your head, what does it feel like that string is doing to you? It feels like the string is pulling you upwards, doesn't it? So <laughs> you feel two things. If you were this poor block over here, you would feel your weight pulling you down, and you would also feel something pulling upwards out of the top of your head, which means that the tension is coming upwards out of the top of your head, OK? In this one, if you were this block on the surface, you would feel the, the plane pushing upwards. You would feel your weight pulling you down. And what would it feel about the tension? If you had that string coming up, it would feel like it was coming out in this direction here. Okay, you, This is maybe a bit obvious, but for some of the questions we will do later on in year 13 that get more challenging, imagining that you are the block is going to be a really good way of figuring out the directions of things that are happening here. Now, I need to think about um, what, which direction we think the force should be going in. So we've got a horizontal force. Um, I'm not necessarily sure which way that this is going to be it's probably going to be doing something like either this way or it could be coming out like this. Which one should we guess? Um, it doesn't matter because we could get it wrong. OK, let's guess. This is meant to be horizontal. I didn't draw it very horizontal just then. Let's imagine that there's a force pushing it into the block of P newtons. It might not be. And if it's not, we'll, we'll soon come across the reason that that's gone wrong. Um, and what would this angle here be? Alternate. Good. Why? Alternate. Alternate angles. OK. So because we know this is not moving, all of these things must be in equilibrium with each other, right? Everything must be balanced. Nothing is moving. So I can, first of all, I can either look at this area of the diagram or I can look at this area of the diagram, which is more simple. The one on the right is much more simple. So if I have a look at this second particle that I've got here, if I'm just going to look at this bit in red, if I resolve this in the up and down direction, it's pretty obvious for me to tell you that T is equal to G. OK? The tension is equal to G. Now I can start thinking about this diagram that I might have here. Right? This diagram that I might have here, I know what the tension is. The tension must be G. What modelling assumption have I used that tells me the tension must be equal throughout? That it's, the string is light, and there's another modelling assumption in here that tells me the tension is going to be equal here and here. Nope. Nope. Inextensible doesn't tell us about the tension. Inextensible tells us about the movement of both of them. It's a smooth pulley. OK, do you remember I said before, if the pulley wasn't smooth, it could be like snagging on one side of the pulley. So one side of the string might be tighter than the other side of the string. But because the pulley is smooth, there is no snagging of the string here. So the fact that the, the pulley is smooth is the thing that's going to mean the tensions are equal to each other. So I'm now going to come across to this, this blue section of the diagram. And I'm going to need to do a bit of force resolving here. So I'm going to split my 3G into these two forces. That angle is also going to be 45. So I get 3G cos 45, and I get 3G sine 45. Some other forces need resolving as well. What's the other? The P. the P. And now think about this carefully. It's going to go, we want forces going down, and we want forces going left and right. So it's going to be down and across. So we have P cos, oh, P sine 45. Although with cos and sine with 45 doesn't really matter. But we've got P sine 45, and we've got P cos 45. Now, for this blue diagram, I'm definitely going to want to have to do it. I'm going to want to redraw it, because it's looking a bit messy, um, in my opinion. So we have got upward force R. What forces do I have that are going to the right? P cos 45. Anything else? P, 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 
P cos 45 and I've got T. That's from here and from here. What forces have I got going to the left? 3G sin 45. Um, Is that it? Yeah. Okay, and what forces have I got going down? 3G sine 45 and P sine 45. Okay, so I had to look at the red part first because the red part first has told me this key piece of information here that T is equal to G. Yeah. Although luckily, it doesn't matter. But but you're right. I'm but I'm pleased you've told me that 3G cos 45. Thank you for telling me. Okay, so uh, the thing it wants us to find out first is it wants us to find out the magnitude of P. So are we best to look up and down or left and right? Okay, we're going to look at the resolving in the left and right direction. So let's go into a, a different colour pen here. We're now going to resolve up and down the slope or kind of left and right. So I can see I've got 3G sine 45 is equal to P cos 45 plus t, but t is g. So I can solve this and say that p is equal to 3g sine 45 minus g divided by cos 45. So that's 3g cos oh, sine 45 minus g divided by cos 45 and we get that P is 15.5 newtons to three significant figures, okay? Now, at the beginning, we had to make a little bit of a guess here. We said that we thought P was pushing it up the slope. But in some scenarios, imagine if this was really heavy, that one would be trying to go up the slope. So to keep it in equilibrium, maybe the force was someone pulling it instead of pushing it. What do you think you might have found out here? Yeah, if that was a negative, if this ended up as being a negative, you would say like, oh, that's weird. You'd have to reevaluate what's actually happened here. It couldn't have been a pushing up the slope. It would have had to have been a pulling, in which case this, this force here would not have been going down into the slope. It would change and it would be coming up out of it. But luckily we got a positive value, so we don't need to worry about that. Then it wants us to, yes. You would change the direction of this arrow, and by changing the direction of the arrow, this would go upwards, and this would go leftwards. And then you, then you would get a, a, the correct parts for these last bits. Then it wants us to find the normal reaction between the mass and the plane. So you can see how this is a bit more demanding, just because there's just a lot more going on. So that was part A of the question. Now for part B of the question, we're going to resolve, but this time we're resolving in that kind of direction. And so we just get that R is equal to 3G cos 45 plus P sine 45. Luckily, you've got what P is on your calculator already, so you can just use the answer button. So you've got 3G cos 45 plus P sine 45. And I believe we get that the value of R is 31.8 newtons to three significant figures. I'll just give you a chance to, if you've been writing that down, that you should be, you can finish writing that off. And then we can have a think about what part C is as well. So part C says, how have you used the assumption that the pulley is smooth in your calculations? Well, what did we say that one was? The tension on either side of the pulley is equal. So what we would say here for part C, tension on both sides of pulley is equal or the same. And actually, we've used that in the calculation, haven't we? We used that t was g over here. We used that it was g over here. Smooth pulley, same tension. Inextensible string, 
same movement. Um, light string, what did we say about light string? No mass, but what does that mean about the tension? Same tension throughout. Okay, so it's just a few things we need to make sure that we can learn here. So I'm hoping that you have got these because I gave these to you like quite a while ago. If you don't, I've got a few spare copies here. What I'm going to want you to do is from exercise 7B, I just want to do question 8 and question 11, which are both connected particles. So we're just going to do question 8 and question 11 because you'll notice these don't even have friction. So we're going to then move on and do them with some friction in a second as well.